is the Art Life YouTube channel and you've hopefully come here to learn how to extend your art skills and have a bit of fun. Today we're going to be doing an under the sea kind of style artwork. We're going to be practicing our cutting skills, some folding skills and some colouring skills. So come along with me and we'll create something awesome together. Now I really do love this task because it is perfect for students of all ages. If you're a younger student, you might have a go at just creating one of these little 3D characters. You could choose your favourite and pop it onto a colourful under the sea background. Now if you're a little bit older, you might choose to have a go at creating two or maybe even three of the characters that I've shown you and put them all together into one final artwork like I've done here. So it combines all the fun things and I hope you really enjoy this task no matter how old you are. Here, please ensure that you comment, like and subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel so that I can continue to make some fun art videos for you guys at home. For our under the sea themed activity today, you'll need quite a few materials, but this is a really adaptable task, which means you can use whatever you have available to you. I'm going to be using lots of different colored pieces of paper like this, but if you don't have colored paper at home, maybe you could decorate some white paper to make it look interesting. Maybe you could rummage through your recycle bin to see if there's some cardboard or some paper that you could turn into art. Maybe you also have some wrapping paper at home you could use. So I understand that not everyone will have the materials that I'm using today, but I'm here to encourage you to just do what you can and use what you have. Now, the main things that you'll need today is a pencil to trace, scissors to cut, and glue to stick. If you also have some colouring materials such as textures, I have some watercolours today and some crayons, things like that would be great. If you don't have all of them, it doesn't matter. The idea is for me just to show you some steps to create an under the sea kind of 3D artwork, but what you use to create it is up to you. So it does have a fair scope of creativity available. Now to make things easier, we're going to be cutting and drawing a lot of circles today. That's the main shape we're working with and circles can actually be super tricky. So I've gathered a few different size circles that I can see within my home that I'm going to use to help me when it comes to tracing. So that's optional. If you feel really confident in your circle drawing skills, you probably don't need these, but they'll probably help us along the way. So I suggest gathering a few things as well. So let's set up your craft station with whatever you have and we'll get started with our under the sea themed task. So for this task, I'm going to show you three different under the sea creatures that you're gonna create using paper. We're going to do some drawing, we're going to do some cutting, and we're going to do some folding today to turn our paper into these three creatures. So creature number one is a crab. So that's why I have a red piece of paper. If you don't have red, it's completely fine. It can be a bit of an abstract crab, especially if you have some decorative uh, paper or some, um, some wrapping paper that you can use. So the first thing we're going to do to make the body of the crab is trace around a nice big circle. We need one big circle and we need two smaller circles. Cut them out as best you can. I find if I take my time, my lines are much, much neater. Sorry guys, you'll actually need four small circles, not two. Wonderful, this is all we need for our crab, one big circle and four small circles. 
Now you're going to glue it onto a background piece of paper. So I've just got a plain piece of white paper here for now. All right, for our body, we're going to fold our big circle in half. You see like this? So it makes a semicircle or a half circle. I'm going to glue that down. Look at that. It's already a bit 3D. Then I'm going to repeat that process with my four little circles. So each one I'm going to fold in half as best I can. One, two, three, and four. These become the little pinchy arms of my crab and I'm going to stick them like this. You only need to put glue on one half. So the other one sticks up. Now the last thing you do is simply draw in the legs. Just some little lines coming off the side here. We need to connect the arms to the body. And we need to give him some eyes. You can even make it a girl crab if you like. <laughs> there we go. And that's our simple little 3D crab. It's our first under the sea character. So set him aside, we'll do more with him later. We'll move on to creature number two. For creature number two, we're going to be creating a fish. So fish can be any color of the rainbow. So you can choose whatever color you might have at home and you will need one large circle to help you. So what color I might do? Trace around like we did for the crab. And cut out as neatly as you can. Now with a different colour, you're going to have a go at creating a bit more of a wobbly, organic shape rather than a perfect circle. You might just have a go at creating a bit of a splat shape. I'll show you what I mean. So on my pink piece of paper here, I'm just going to go like this. That was pretty fun. But I need two of them. So I'm going to fold my paper in half and now have a go at cutting out this weird shape. A shape that looks like this is called an organic shape because it's a bit more random. It's actually a little bit trickier to cut too. Just do your very, very best. Can anyone guess what part of the fish this becomes? Ta-da, I've got two of them. And now I need one more wobbly organic shape, but I'm going to make it a bit bigger and a bit longer. Cutting crazy shapes like this is so good to practice your cutting skills and getting them as neat as possible. Okay, I'm going to do some gluing now. I know I haven't made my fish 3D yet, but I'm going to start to glue the other features down first. So I might stick on the tail, just need a little bit of glue at the end here and put it anywhere really. Then I'm going to stick on, these are the fins. They're going to go on either side, one and two. You can see it's starting to look a little bit like a fish anyway. But to make it three dimensional, what we're going to do is cut a line. So firstly, I'm going to show you where this line is going to go with my pencil. If you find the middle of your circle, approximately, about there. All right, you've got your tail on that side, you've got your fins on either side, and you're going to draw a line straight toward the opposite side of the tail there, and I'm going to cut. Why? I'll show you why. 
I'm now going to put a bit of glue on this side, just on one side, just a little bit. Sadie's <laughs> asking why. And then I'm actually going to twist my work, check it out, and push down. What's happened? Ta da! Now he's a three dimensional little fishy. A little fishy needs some kissy lips. So the way we're going to do that is cut out a love heart, if you know how to do that. We're going to fold the love heart in half, like this, and we're going to stick it on top. There we go, on top like that. <laughs> Starting to look a bit like a fish. Now it might be worth, you could either draw on a, an eye if you like, or you could cut it out of paper. I've got a little bit of white paper left over here, so I can just show you very quickly how to do that. I'm just gonna cut an oval. Best I can. Gets harder the smaller we do it. Use my black texture. Draw in the eyeball, just like that. And then stick the eye on. Ta-da! Got a gorgeous 3D fish. I've made a tiny little one here to go with it. it can be a little baby. So it's the same thing. It's just a little bit fiddlier because it's smaller. <laughs> All right, that was under the sea creature number two. And now we're gonna move on to our lucky last, which is a jellyfish. So for our jellyfish's body, we need a big circle once again. And we also need some strips of paper. So that's just a matter of cutting some straight lines. Wonderful. So I have a body. I have maybe oh, seven or eight strips of paper. And now I'm going to turn it into a three dimensional jellyfish. So we're going to do something similar to what we did with the fish. And that is cut till you get to the middle of your circle. Then we're going to put a bit of glue just on one side and twist sticking that down like that. You can then sort of just bend it so that you can sort of see the body. Can you see that's sort of like a jellyfish shape? Brilliant. I'm going to stick my eyes on. You may draw them if you prefer. These are some eyes I prepared earlier. One and two. That looks like a frog, doesn't he? Because he's green. <laughs> All right. With these strips now, we're going to do something called curling, which means I'm going to use a pencil or a texture or something sort of circular like this. And we're going to twist each strip around our pencil. And then, ta-da, pull. Creates a bit of a cool curly hair thing going on. All I need to do is put a bit of glue at the end and stick it into my jellyfish and this will become these long tentacles that come down like this. There. There is our cute little 3D jellyfish. <laughs> so you can see here that we've created one, two, three different types of three-dimensional under the sea characters and we're going to take some time now to put it all together into one artwork by giving it a bit of a scene or a bit of a background so I would expect that my background might be pretty much blue because it's water and it's under the sea so I'm going to do my background first and then glue these guys in place to be in a beautiful environment under the sea 
if you've only chosen to, done, to do one today, your background would probably be a lot smaller than what I'm choosing to do. Today I've got an A3 piece of paper. And the first thing I'm going to do is use some crayons to give it a bit of color. What I'm gonna show you to do today is something called a wax resist. So if you have crayons, you can use the wax from the crayons and then paint over the top and the wax resists against the water. So what you could do is add some seaweed when you're using your crayons for a wax resist, you need to press quite hard. Otherwise the, the wax, it doesn't come through. So you need to make sure that the color is fairly bright. Now, if all you have is crayons, you could just spend some time adding detail to your background and not worry about the next step. And when I think of under the sea, I definitely think of coral. So I might have a go now at creating some really bright patterned and detailed coral. I'm using a white crayon now. I'm just adding a few little highlights and details that are a little bit secret to everyone else at the moment because you can't see them on my white paper. But when I paint over the top, I press hard enough, these white details will come out and they'll resist against the paint. And it looks so cool. done a few details in my background with some crayons and now if you have some watercolor paints or even some blue food dye you can then paint over the top with a really watery light color and these beautiful details will still shine through I'll show you see some of my white details coming through. If you've got blue food dye, it's just a matter of putting a couple of drops into a small amount of water and painting normally. However, do be careful because food dye does stain clothing um, and uh, tablecloths and things like that. So you do need to be very careful if you're using food dye at home. So you can see my finished background here. I have had a go at doing some detailed, colorful kind of coral and seaweed down the bottom with crayons. Also some details in the sea here with my crayons and painted over the top lightly with watercolors to make those colors really pop out. Now, if you weren't able to do something like this, that's completely fine. Maybe for your background, you have more paper and you could choose to use some blue paper with some yellow to create an under the sea background. Maybe it's just as simple as drawing some coral and some sand and leaving your sea white. Whatever you've been able to do at home, I'm sure it looks amazing. But now it's time to stick down our little 3D characters. Not sure if my crab will fit. I'll try and get him in there somehow. Now with my crab, he was a bit big to fit all of my 
characters on my background here so I've actually had to trim him and make him a little bit smaller so I've cut him out from the background I had him on and just redrawing those little details so that he could go onto my under the sea background. When it comes to sticking down your other characters, remember the idea is to keep them three dimensional. So just putting glue on some of the sections, for example, on my fish, I'm just sticking down the fins and the tail so that the body can remain three dimensional. Just like that. Ta-da! Oh. Man, that was fun. So it's as simple as that. I hope you've been able to follow the steps and use your creativity to create something you're super proud of today. Please ensure that you send me a photo if you can via Instagram at my art life dot melb instagram page there you'll see heaps of other art ideas if you'd like to follow along i'll see you next time Bye.